comes trouble, you guys run NPS Focus. You never know what's going to happen on this show because we're kind of running things by the seat of our pants tonight. And I say that very loosely because we got to watch Katie tonight. <laughs> you guys, welcome to the show. You've got me and Candy tonight. You'll have me all night. You'll have Candy all night. We're going to be joined by one of our other directors, Ken, here shortly. And what are we talking about tonight, Candy? We are talking about launching the NPS Endeavor Project. I cannot wait. I think everybody's kind of been chomping at the bit. Well, you know, we had to create that air of mystery, and plus it's been a lot, a lot of hard work, and we're still we're still putting everything in place, but now it's time to get the members and the individuals within NPS ready and getting ready to contribute to this project, so. Well, and it hasn't been an easy task, and it's something that hasn't been done in the paranormal community. You guys are going to find out in a minute. Um, so it has been a lot of work. I think we've been plugging away at it for, what, six to eight months now? Yes, at least. It was, um, it was a concept that I came up with, um, gosh, two and a half, almost three years ago when I very first became a rep for NPS. Um, at that point in time, it was kind of, um, it was situated outside of our grasp, you know, or our, our point of function at that time. So, but right now, you know, I'm sitting over 25,000 members and, you know, 600 teams on our, on our website are listed and in individuals. And we're worldwide now. We've got people in Africa and in China and all over the UK that are that are contributing to NPS. And, you know, we have our reps in Canada. Now's the time. We have the opportunity. We have right. the means. And it's just going to, I think it's going to be that step that we can take as a collective to move the paranormal forward. It's going to be world domination, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be in the brain. <laughs> Well, you know, are you ready to tell everybody, or should we wait for kids? Should we make them wait a little longer? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Eric, I don't know. We should torture Eric Jobs for sure. Yeah, um, we torture Eric. He's going to have to wait. Right, right. Mm. So, is everybody ready to hear what we're going to do? Oh, you know what? I've been ready. Let's go ahead and let's just put it out there. All right. The NPS... Endeavor Project is the first of its kind. It's going to be a large-scale data collection process. Individuals and teams from around the world are going to be utilizing this tool to record and submit their information after completing investigations. The data collected is going to be put in, put into and sorted and processed uh, through our website in an attempt to establish baselines for the paranormal community. This information being submitted is going to be coming in anonymously. Um, we're asking generalizations. We don't want to know the names of your clients. As a matter of fact, we don't even want the addresses. We want the zip code of the location. And at that point, we can go ahead and log it in as longitude and latitude to, to maintain their anonymity. And by compiling these submissions, we're going to be able to establish trends and metrics on our investigations. This is going to establish everything from what kind of equipment was used, um, age, sex, race. And like I said, it's all yeah physical mental health those types of things whether they suffered from ptsd um ADD, adhd if they're on meds if they're off meds if you know if they've got post-traumatic or excuse me if they have a traumatic brain injuries if these people suffer from high blood pressure what kind of geological surveys under that zip code that they've established for the investigation are they near railroad tracks this is going to come in, and we are going to sort this information, and we are going to initially start giving reports monthly, and we're going to give reports quarterly, biannually, and annually. Um, you know, we've kind of, I've kind of um, designed this a little bit after the MUFON intake, because they've got an amazing system set in place, very yeah, simple. Awesome system. Oh, yeah. And so, with with respect to what they do and taking into consideration the specialty information that we need for what we do, away we go. Um, at the end of each submission, and we ask that only one submission is made per investigation, but that each individual that is directly involved in the investigation, the client, each has um, a physical and a mental health screen done. That's right there in, in our metrics. Um, that's very easy, navigating through, it's point and click, and we do all the hard work. What we're going to do with that zip code and the date is we're going to find out what kind of weather you had there, if there's anomalies, if there's a storm brewing, if it's full moon. You know, we're trying to take everything into consideration. And we think we found a forum and a formula on how to accomplish this. 
I think it's going to be awesome. And you guys, if you've been paying attention to DNS Live and us walking through the investigation methods, you know, that might have been done on purpose. We might have been waiting to launch the education tab of NPS on purpose. Everything's going to be matching together. This is going to be awesome because now we can finally have some baselines and we can finally start documenting things. To now, up to now, we've not been able to do that. I mean, we've been able to say, hey, give me this information. Hey, give me that information. Hey, I know what this is like in this area. Now we're actually going to have, you guys are going to get tired of hearing it, but scientific data to pull and refer to. We're not just going to say, hey, it's paranormal because it's not. It's going to be awesome. You know, we've got uh, <laughs> Cyber in the chat room. Cyber, can you hear me? Let me talk a little louder for you. <laughs> Talking about the medical privacy releases. You know, if you heard what Candy said well again, all of this stuff is going to be anonymous. We're not even going to know the client's name, their address, none of that. It's all going to be by zip code. So we don't even have to worry about any HIPAA regulations or anything like that. And no one's and no one's identified. That's part of the that's part of the thing we've done is we've streamlined it to where it could be your neighbors, it could be somebody in Guam for all you know. Uh, it's going to be basically forty three year old white male, um, average build, you know, his spouse or significant other, twenty five year old. He's lucky. Um, <laughs> he's really lucky. That kind of thing. Um, we're not. What we're asking for is if you've had or ever have had. Um, as many of you know, there's some mental health conditions kind of they fade and come back, and like PTSD. Um, it's very hard to know what can trigger PTSD, um, and there can be bouts of you know a very lucid, um, placid times. Um, and they, they speak from personal experience in this regard. Um, I'm not wanting to know what degree they were they were diagnosed with PTSD, but on the form it's going to ask you if you've had. You know, if you've ever had a heart attack, if you have high blood pressure, if you've suffered from diabetes, if you've had any kind of hypoglycemia, we want to know what we're trying to do is just establish if this group is having more experiences than this group. Mm -hmm. And by doing it anonymously, and that's something, you know, we want to make sure that the teams that are listed on NPS understand because you're going to be the ones that we're giving permission to carry this out with. No team or individual that is not listed on the NPS website is allowed is allowed to promote this promote this um, project um, because we want to have some accountability. Um, I don't want someone that we have no association with or don't know at all going out and running their own show in this regard. Um, there, you know, there, there needs to be some controls. So we've made everything as basically non-invasive as we can, um, and, but we've made it as specific as we can. I, it is my personal belief that many people go out armed with a flashlight and a digital recorder with a flashlight on their head, running around in the dark, not asking good questions. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm concerned that some people um, are coming to us with mental health issues that aren't being addressed correctly. I believe they can be exploited. And I also believe that if we're really committed, if we really, 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 really want to move this community forward, we're going to have to do the work. And it means work. Yeah. So if it's going to mean anything to the community, it's going to take some, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. Right. Well, you know, and I am. Um, there was more than once that I get attacked on the page for being a non believer, skeptic, hateful, <laughs> rotten person. And, you know, I, I've got only one little response to that. You don't know me. I don't put my business on there. I don't tell you anything. Because because it's not about what I think or feel or if I go to church on Sunday or if I believe great Aunt Minnie's coming to me in a lint ball. That's right. who she is. That's my business. <laughs> but I'm asking you the same questions I'd ask myself if I said, you know, I think, I think that was profound. I need to document that. You're going to see me step on my soapbox about journaling. My goodness, if you're a spiritualist and you're having experiences, journal, journal it, journal it, journal it, journal it. Even a basic who, what, when, and where. Oh, yeah. You can establish your own metrics, your own baseline. When people say, okay, you're having these experiences, prove that you've had them before. Ta-da. 
and when and at what time and what was the weather like and what was the moon like and there's so many scientific details to it that you guys when we're going out and investigating we're not the tv show the tv shows aren't even showing you how to log your data right because they don't log their data they have a professional camera crew that's going in and doing these things for them and I, that's something i I really want to stress, I mean, we're talking about ratings and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Zach Baggins himself as an actor, and that's what it says on his resume, ladies and gentlemen. I actor. I love me some Zach, just like everybody else. But he makes $20,000 plus an episode as an actor and a producer. Now, I believe that those TV shows have done some amazing things for us. Um, we've got... We've gotten to explore our personal bucket list. I know mine's tripled, at least, I, the amazing places they take us. And I believe that they've removed the stigmata that comes along with, you know, saying, I think I'm being haunted. Because, you know, 20 years ago, they'd have thrown some pills at you and told you to go see a psychiatrist. And also, you know, the geek in me just loves the tech tools. You know, it's come a long way from the, from the, therm, you know, the thermal block heater. You know, I, I had to giggle the first time I saw somebody on my team with one. I was like... Kind of looked at it and they're like, look at my thermometer. And I was like, dude, that's for an engine. That's what you use on like a semi tractor trailer to see if it's, the coolant's actually working. <laughs> and they, <laughs> it was, it was interesting. But I, you know, we tried conventional ways, we tried non conventional ways, traditional ways, non traditional ways. And the only way we're going to find that next step is with some balance of the spiritual community and the scientific community. Well, and this is how we do it, you know. There was a heated debate last night online about us not being believers because we were asking these scientific questions. We were asking you, what was the weather like? What was this like? Have you looked at this? Have you looked at that? You know, guys, we ask questions. How do you learn? Let, let's go back to what NPS really is before we even start touching on Endeavor. What is NPS about? Unity. Doesn't matter if you're a believer or non-believer. We have to agree to disagree. That's unity. Education. How do you learn? You ask questions and finding solutions. How do we get the solutions? We ask questions, we get educated, we find solutions, and what do we have now? Endeavor. You guys, it all comes together. You guys may be spiritual believers, and you may see orbs as being little orphan Annie for all I care. I'm going to tell you it's a dust particle because I can prove that that's what it is. I have yet to see somebody tell me and show me a spiritual orb. Scientifically speaking, if I can't prove it and you can't prove it, bye bye. <laughs> you know, it goes back to the whole, you know what? If you can't explain it, you got to be able to set it aside. You, you can't prove either piece of the equation there. I'm looking for my my uh, statement that I like to use. Oh, when in doubt, throw it out. And that's what we're going to start doing. And by logging everything in Endeavor, it's going to get you in the habit of writing down all of these bits of information that you need. Well, and, and we're sitting in a spot, too, where, I mean, we have to take into consideration. 20 years ago, this, the field of psychology was, it was snickered at and sneered at. People didn't have any real consideration for it. You know, go back to the 50s when people were being submitted to electroshock therapy. Um it's, we've come a long way, and we've only come a long way because people have collaborated, had passion for it, they were committed to it. Um, there was a question today that was posed to me, um, then why do I do what I do if I don't believe? I haven't been involved in this for as many years as I have and dedicated as much time and effort into National Paranormal Society and my own groups as I have if I didn't believe something else was out there. I'm not, I'm not that determined to be... <laughs> To be difficult, I'm you know. Besides whatever anybody hears my husband say, I I'm not that committed to it. <laughs> you know, we have this um, conversation about being grown, I, right? <laughs> I know, right? I've got other stuff to do if I'm mad about something. <laughs> you know? Right, right. I I know there's something else out there. I I have no doubts. But can I prove there's something else out there? Exactly, and. And I get a little frustrated when people come in and say, oh, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. Okay, you're going to come to me with a gripe. At least offer a solution. Offer a better, you know, help me build a better mousetrap. Exactly. You know, that's you what know? it's about is everybody coming together. And that's what Endeavor is going to be. You know, Will just made a very good point in the chat room. He said, documentation is essential for any investigation, paranormal, scientific, or criminal. 
True investigators accept and live by their evidence. Guys. That is coming from one of our one of our department chairs. His name is Will Crawford, and he is a retired forensics detective. We want to talk about evidence speaking volumes, even yeah. little tiny little particles. It, it, particles, particles. That's a new word. That's a new word. Particles. They made matrixing. I can make particles. <laughs> right? <laughs> Mark that baby now. You guys can't see particles without him. <laughs> Can't see manies either, but I know they're probably there. <laughs> right. But I mean, it all goes back to common sense, really. You know, it, it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know why people treat paranormal and investigating any more differently than they do, you know, criminal investigations. Or, you know, I made the reference in my show earlier about the mechanic. You know, you don't take your car to the mechanic and he says, okay, it'll be $1,100. You're like, okay, here you go. No, you expect him to take a look at everything, all the facts, research what's going on before he comes and tells you it's for sure the fuel pump or the transmission. It's the same thing in the paranormal. Don't tell me that's an orb. Explain it to me. You know what? Don't tell me that it's an apparition. Explain to me how you got that. Explain to me how that happened. And while you're explaining it to me, I guarantee you're going to find out that it had something to do with the weather. But you didn't log it down, so when we punched in the zip code... We found out that's what it is. Everything links together. That is That brings up a really good point, too. For those of you who, you know, forget what day or or the weather of the location when you're taking a picture, if you go to www.weather.org, it is an amazing resource for everything weather-related. You can find out barometric pressures, winds, all that type of stuff. And not discounting your experience, but it can give you... It can give you the standards in which to take the next step in, in supporting your evidence. Um, you know, I I often take when somebody's bringing me something that I that I'm having a difficult time accepting or understanding. I, I try to take their position and ask them to help me substantiate that point, to validate it, to to give it as strong as to give it a strong a position as. The opposition, you know, I play devil's advocate a lot, um, and there's there's a lot I stand aside on because I feel that you know, um, a lot of it is kind of lazy, and I apologize. Well, no, I don't really apologize if that offends anybody, because if you're going to make the claim, tell me how, tell me why. That's what we're going to do with Endeavor. We're going to try to see if there's more occurrences happening. Um, in regards to some geological anomalies, say, you know, granite associated or ley lines or streams or, you know, weather related phenomenon, you know, full moons, quarter moons. Um, if it's happening to people more and more with diabetes or high blood pressure or if it's 15 year old girls with most of the experiences or, or children, you know, children possibly with autism, that type of thing. What we are trying to do is find. If it's, we're trying to establish anything that can link these together. And it's going to be, it's going to be a process. I figure, you know, we'll, we'll barely scratch the surface in a year. Yeah. It's going to have to kind of become a, kind of a team, a team ritual to do this every single time. And the nice thing about that is on the education tab of the NPS website, we're going to have just just an incredible amount of documentation and forms that you're welcome to print out, fill out parts that you want, leave, leave aside the stuff you don't, and use them for your team's purposes to help you establish better practices, and do more in-depth, excuse me, do more in-depth um, investigations. Hang on one second. Hi, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> And he's supposed to be calling the other number to be on the show. <laughs> okay, but he said it's not working. <laughs> um. Hey, Eric. Does he does he have the right number? Is he just not being able to dial in? Some oh. cell phone companies will not connect to a Skype phone. Okay, he said some cell phone companies will not connect to a Skype phone. Are you on your home phone number or Skype? No, the, our number is a Skype phone number. What's his number? And I'll call him. Okay. He's doing Wait, wait, wait. Let me give, let me give Eric your number and have him call you, okay? Perfect, honey. Bye. Okay, Eric, how do you want me to get this to you? Put it down. Type in it the, in the chat at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Skype. 
not in the chat room, but in Skype, or else Ken will kill us. You guys oh, see? Over all here. Reps, we're all so close knit, we call each other on the cell phone. So y'all are all in trouble. <laughs> yes. Right. You know, the question came up in the chat room, Candy, while you're typing about how are we going to launch Endeavor? And I kind of gave the answer that we're working on a new NPS website. Ken, who we're going to hear from shortly, has been busting his butt creating this most awesome new website. And as part of that, Endeavor is going to be a piece of that. So when you guys see the department tabs and you can go to all that different stuff and you can see the education tab, you're going to see a tab for Endeavor there. Slowly but surely, it will start launching. We still have a lot of work to do on it. I don't know, Candy, how far along are we with website and Endeavor to even be? We're probably going to, the website portion of the Endeavor project will be prepared to launch by July 15th. There you go, guys, about another month. You guys wait. I mean, the new website is going to look really, really cool. Um, it should be a little bit easier to use. Um, and I think you guys will find the information that's going to come up, education tab, and the endeavor is going to go hand in hand along with all the other information. So we're going to kind of hold your hand a little bit on gathering information and being able to do your yeah. investigating. We're going to hold your hand on filling out the forms, and we're going to hold your hand on how to fill out Endeavor. So we now have the other troublemaker on the phone. Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. You were just talking Finally. about all your hard work on the website, on the new website. Yeah, yeah, it's coming along beautifully. Um, I'm planning to try to finish, finish the Project Endeavor part first, and then after that I'll move over to the rest of the website, and we'll flush that out, and then pretty soon it'll just take over the whole thing. It'll just be all pretty pretty. I know, right? <laughs> Goodbye to WordPress. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank God. Can we burn WordPress? Jesus. <laughs> WordPress, I mean, it was, it was it, it's a blog, right? It's it's meant for a blog, so uh, as for websites in, increase in uh, uh, complexity of what you want to do with it, uh, WordPress is kind of like taking a, a a spoon to dig a big hole when you really need a shovel. So that's kind of why I'm throwing in uh, this. Man, say, I'm not going to geek out and tell you all about it, but... Uh, it's, the system that I'm putting it on is built to handle uh, bigger and better things. So. Right. Well, and that's what we need, especially yeah. with Endeavor coming. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it served its purpose. You know, it served its purpose prior to this project and, and having Ken the web god helping us. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. the web god. I am Did I hit my freaking remote control? God. I hate you. <laughs> I am, you know, I am the girl. I am the girl that puts the electrical tape of that blinking twelve on the DVR. It just pisses me off. And I can't. <laughs> that was cool. You know, we're Probably gonna have to have to some one hundred and one classes with candy and electronics. I think. <laughs> ah, I got a sixteen-year-old that'll fix it. I'm good. Who I call Ken? <laughs> hey, Ken. There you go. It's like, it's like Andy calling me again, send the voice. No, no. I call Eric, you know, Eric Jones is like, God bless you. I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> Poor Eric. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's, it's, it's me and Skype. I think the last time we had a, we had a run-in issue, too. But, yeah, I think when you were on DNS Live, I think we had an issue with your Skype, didn't we? We did it. We did, yeah. I, I know you're just acting like you don't remember it. But. Oh, no, I remember. I remember, <laughs> I remember all the problems we have with What Skype. the heck is the web guy? He can't even figure out Skype. Yeah, well, that was, you know. That was priceless. Ah! This, this is the guy that does the web work, and we can't get Skype to work. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was but it works. It's working now. I think it was a bandwidth actual, issue, actually. I, I I, I don't live in the biggest city, so it's, well, I don't it's know. Like, I think it was kind of part user error, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> we took him out of his little tech world safety and you know threw him into Skype. That's it. That's it. That was it. You know. No worries. Next time we'll get Alex to summon us an internet connection. <laughs> Cast there you the go, sandwich, Alex. Let's go. We'll be VPN for sure. <laughs> but, uh, so, Ken, have you 
did you get to teen in for any part of the first part of the show where we started talking about Endeavor? I'm sorry, say that again. I didn't hear you. So were you able to tune in for um, the first part of the show where we talked about Endeavor when we first started talking about it? Uh, no, actually, I have not. I've been, That's for some good. reason, I've, I, I have a lot of projects going on, and I had a, a, another team call at the very same time as this one, so I had to hurry up and get those guys on their way. But, but for some reason, they scheduled these team calls uh, 9 o'clock on Thursday night so they could have Friday off. That works good for everybody else on the team except me you know? <laughs> but, uh, I am very excited about Project Endeavor um, I don't know what you've told them well I was um, going to say since you haven't heard what we said and you've been the one you've been kind of the puppet behind the curtain of all of it kind of give everybody your your take of it and your outlook of it from you know, actually keying the forms and looking at the information, look at the data that we've put together to create the questions, kind of give everybody, you know, kind of the web gods um, view of Endeavor. Okay. Well, uh, I'll you know it better than the rest you. of us by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I, I'm really excited about this project. It's it's really cool. I believe it's one of a kind. Um, basically what we're doing is... Uh, we put together a questionnaire and we've divided it into pieces so hopefully it makes logical sense and uh, good user interface sense that it's easy to fill out and basically uh, a team will go on an investigation they will they will be signed up to submit their data or the results um you know not everything we're not talking about all the the video clips or anything, but they're going to give us the information about the the um, investigation. We're collecting uh, weather data. We're collecting uh, location data. And when they put in a location, it will actually um, look up the coordinates for that uh, particular location, and we'll be able to geo map that. Um, so we have all this data going in, and. Uh, including experiences and all that stuff. So anytime you have this big, all this influx of data, you have things that you compare. You know, you have things that you can see. You can, you can see similarities or, or um, uh, you know, we might be able to come up with something like, uh, you know, if it's more humid, then the ghosts are more active or whatever. You, you see where I'm going with that. And then it can be presented back to the user in in the form of graphs and stuff. So this is the the thing that is really cool about this. Um, not that I don't think this has been attempted before. I think it's never been attempted on this level. I think maybe Teams in general has had a database where they put their own um, findings in, but it's never been like a collaborative thing like we're talking about doing here so hopefully we'll find some results i think we will i think it's going to take us a little bit you know like candy mentioned i mean we're not even going to scratch the surface within the first year but i think it's going to be a lot of getting the word out with twenty five thousand members surely we can start tapping into something uh, with getting some input in it but i think it's going to be one of those things that it's going to be kind of hit and miss to begin with, um, I think right. a lot of people are going to go out, do their investigations, come back, want to submit information to Endeavor, and realize, oops, I forgot this, 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 and this, which is why we're working so hard on the education. Oh, yeah. Part. So you guys yeah. have to. The and then they'll probably there. call us and say, why don't you, why aren't you guys uh, collecting this? And I'll go, oh, okay, well, I'll put that in there. So I think it'll work both ways. Yeah, I think we'll do a lot of good stuff. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, Can I make it's, it's a living and breathing project. You know what I mean? We're gonna. There's certain things that are probably gonna phase themselves out fairly quickly, and but there's gonna be other pieces of information that we're gonna find very necessary. So <clears throat> that's like it's like a living and breathing document. You know, things are added oh, and sure. taken away just depending on how it how it grows. My suggestion. Right. My suggestion it's is you guys need a box somewhere on the beginning of the form that asks whether they believe or not. That's probably a good idea. Let's just say, do you believe in orbs? 
that would be good. <laughs> no, sorry, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, Don't get me no. started on the orbs, Ken. I think it's. I think it. I think it should have GH or Ghost Adventures right on the front of it. You know. That that's it. That's it. We we should probably do that. No, actually, I was thinking. Uh, it is kind of uh, the way I've coded versus I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm. I, you know, when you're coding, you go through the form over and over again because you're, you're wondering your experience and how it is the input. And we try to make a lot, I try to make a lot of the questions, you know, just tick marks. Does this apply? Yes. The, you can't do that with the whole thing. There's some text boxes in it. Um, one of the nifty features of it is that you put in the date and the location and you click a get weather button and it will go in, and I mean, it uh, hopefully will fill uh, a ton of fields down down there because nobody's going to want to look that up. Right, but, no, I uh, that's awesome. But uh, you're always looking at it, and you're always thinking about how we could tweak this. And I'm already thinking, because it seems to be more geared towards the spirit world. Uh, I was just thinking of how we could make it uh, encapsulate the whole... But maybe not all of it, but you know, throw the cryptid part in there, and and possibly UFO that one. Because National Paranormal Society, we cover all that. I mean, we stand for all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I think if you look at our page and, and look at the Facebook page and see the comments on it, a lot of it, I would say ninety percent of it is is geared towards the spirit world. Is that just me? Is that just because I'm a ghost hunter or? I think, think it's that's, just because that's... everybody coming to it. I think a lot of people, when they think about paranormal, because thanks to all the TV shows and the movies, they think about ghosts. They forget that it includes cryptozoology, which we are starting to grow. They forget that it includes ancient mysteries, aliens and UFOs. They forget about what paranormal truly is. So we have a lot of people that, you know, since we closed the group, love to talk about TV shows. Don't get candy started because we're not revealing any ass tonight. <laughs> but they like to talk about the TV shows, the movies. They like to talk, and it's not, you know, guys, oh, I'm going to get on my soapbox. NPS is not a fan club. We are a very serious organization. Endeavor is a very serious project. We're not there to talk okay. about what Zach's hair looked like last night because I could give a flying rat's ass what his hair looked like. He's hot, but I could care less what his hair looked like, Okay. He's not going to help me determine whether something's paranormal or not. So you guys, we're taking a very serious approach to things. So I think you've got all of these, I call them fan clubbers, coming to the page and posting pictures from 10 years ago that was, you know, my brother's cousin's uncle's picture, or I took a picture of the TV screen and I think I saw something. Uh, you know, I I'm glad that you're into the paranormal, don't get me wrong, and I don't mean to be offensive here. But I don't care. We're looking at more of the pictures from an investigation that has some data and some backup to it that we can start cataloging and establishing baselines from. Information that we can oh, put sure. into Endeavor. And there's a huge, huge difference. I totally agree. I totally agree. And that's, and I I think that's why we see it. Lately, I mean, if, if, if we were to establish a, a good mission statement about NPS, um, education would be right up at the top of the list. You know, and that's and that's what we're. I, I think we're doing the. We're trying to attempt to do the education part, and this is the actual part that we can actually get research on. You know, at least compilation of research. So very exciting. Very exciting to be a part of this project. Sorry, kid. Oh, that's all right. We're having a sidebar in the chat room. I don't know if you're in there or not. I'm not even looking at it. I'm just kind of pacing. So. We're talking well, I, about Whatever that. I say is a damn lie in that chat room about... <laughs> oh, you know... <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you seeing it? <laughs> yeah, I see it now. You guys, this is such a there's little, there's a little zap going on there. Yeah. We, we already know about Candy's you, crush you on can't Zach. Hate a, you cannot hate a brother that is haunted by a succubus. Now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and she said it with a straight face. 
There is definitely something about GAC that has succubus about it. <laughs> and that is that is the official network position. My <laughs> axe. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, God love you know, he, he reminds me of a young William Shatner. You remember how William Shatner used to overact on Star Trek all the time with his body? <laughs> I honestly I with that, I really don't, like I, I don't know if he's you know? overrated. I don't even think he's acting. I think that's, that's, that's kind of the way he is. I think his hair you know? is naturally blonde and he dyes it black to cover up. <laughs> <laughs> I just really did. You didn't take on him and do a Medivel. <laughs> let's go to Vegas and let's, let's make him part of this Endeavor project. <laughs> oh, I think God. everything needs his act. Oh my gosh. Oh, right. I know, it's like the Kevin Bacon in the paranormal world. It's bad. Hey, you have to have comedy relief on your team. I mean, we can be a serious organization and laugh too, guys. We're not a bunch of hard asses here. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's like it's like when my children tell me that they've cleaned their room. Show me. It's like the orbs. Show me. The show me. Yeah. Show, no, show, show me, me that it's clean. You know... <laughs> Help me ex- help me explain that you've done something or that, that there's a process here, you know. Um, and I and MPS has grown by leaps and bounds this last two months. I just I'm astounded what happened when we closed the group. Um. Oh my God. I know. I um. Uh, and it's like and all the freaks came out. Well, no. If, <laughs> we've had to we've had to kind of step back. We've had to kind of step back from where we were kind of moving into that advanced stage and start and start reiterating what we were doing again. And I, I'm pretty shocked at the amount of rude people that have come to our forum oh my thinking God. we're going to be tolerant. Um, I, I, I'm you know what it is? I think it's because other, it's been kicked out of other groups, honestly. I, I, I try to stay up. I, I think I'm a member of about 20 plus groups and uh, so is my wife. That, that way we can just, you know, we like the we, we like our pair of friends, so we we try to make more all the time. And uh, I, I think they've just kind of come across from those other groups as they've been banned. So I, I think it's just up to NPS to enforce the what this site is about. This site is about education. It's 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 not about um, taking a taking a picture on a mobile phone and throwing a ghost in it and throwing it up there even though you're going to get that stuff and our group is the ones that are actually having active product projects in it like like the ghost app project and other things i hope i was supposed to be able to talk about that i'm sorry oh no but absolutely no absolutely there. I mean, there, there's there's nothing else that we were doing besides the endeavor we were keeping quiet i mean Exactly. People have no idea what's going on behind the scenes with the reps. I think they, they I think that, exactly. I, I, I'm under the impression that some of the members think the reps are just sitting there to trounce on them. They don't realize that they're, you know, they don't realize that they're pumping out education weeks or you know, the science team has got 15 or 20 scientists that we're researching so that we can bring information. And I'm talking, you know, Everybody from Carl Jung to um, Dr. Machu, Hans Holzer, you know, Stanton Friedman, Bud Hopkins. Oh, yeah. People have no idea who yeah. half these people are. Mm-hmm. They have no idea who the founding fathers of parapsychology and and some of these thoughts are, but they know that Ryan Buell had prostate cancer. God bless him, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, sure. Yeah. They only know what's on TV. to change that, and, I, and I'm so glad to be a part of the group. That, yeah. that is their mission and focus. Because we're the only ones in the paranormal world that I know of that are doing that. Everybody else is, you know, put up, post your paranormal story. And a lot of it is just like, uh, this is the only site that I will choose to post on. Because all the other ones, they're just so full of junk that um, really give us a bad name. And I'm not trying to sound prudish. I'm not trying to sound like, but but I but I am proud of NPS. I think N- NPS does do a good job. Kudos to the reps because they have a lot to deal with. I mean, as far as other groups 
is basically, you're an admin, if somebody cusses, throw them out. <laughs> you know, but, but we got our admins doing all sorts of, all, our, our representatives doing all sorts of other projects, which sets NPS apart from any other group. We've got our hands in all sorts of different cookie jars when it comes to the paranormal. I mean, we had people asking last night, how do you know so much about things? Well, we've done some research. I mean, we have a brand new, I'm going to brag about my photo team. We have a brand new piece of NPS with the photography team that we brought on board. Guys, we didn't just pick people that love taking pictures or love cameras. They actually know stuff. So we're bringing in people that know what they're talking about to kind of help you understand why your camera malfunctioned, why the picture looks like that. We're going to start growing the cryptozoology department the same way. We're serious about what we do. We're not just sitting on the sidelines as fans rooting on the team. We're actually getting our hands dirty. We all are investigators. We all are researchers. We all have our own teams. We all do our own investigations. We're not just preaching to preach. We're actually out there doing stuff as well. And you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to hear our commentary. I think everybody that's a part of the NPS admin team, I want to give kudos first off, Candy, because I think we've got a great group. I think we finally have some cohesiveness between everybody. I think everybody gets along great, and you don't always get that when you've got 27 people together trying to man a page. So kudos to all the reps for you guys being on top mm. of you. I think they split the work on the page pretty evenly. And, you know, like I mentioned, we do have other stuff that we're working on. We have other projects that we're working on. Everybody has a discussion week. So if you guys are paying attention on Sunday, you're going to see who's discussing for the week. We've been talking about aliens and UFOs this month. Have you guys been paying attention? <laughs> I mean, there's there's a schedule to what we do, and our reps right. are responsible for that. And I have to say, I am probably the least uh, active on the page. And, oh my and gosh. I <laughs> that, but I will say that Project Endeavor and the, the other websites takes up a very good majority of my time. So uh, yeah. even though I'm not there saying a bunch of stuff all the time, I'm, 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 I'm looking at it. You, know? no, you, are, you are a corner block. You are a cornerstone in the foundation. I absolutely know how much work you're doing. And that's that's one of the things that people do not realize what we're doing behind that big curtain. I feel kind of like we're the munchkins, you know, in the Emerald City. And people have no idea what we're doing behind our gate. <laughs> <laughs> we're making it smoke. That's right. <laughs> well, no idea. Any, any, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, but uh, I do get on. I, I try to get on. I've been trying to get on. On more that uh, when I'm during the day, I'm on the computer all the time, and uh, when you're working in jQuery or PHP or HTML, any of those other languages that I use, it's another language. So I have to really focus and stay there. Because if I flip over to something else, I get totally distracted. Then I get back to the code, and I'm like, where am I? And then I lose 30 minutes trying to figure out where I was. Right. Anyway. Well, and you know, and you know what? There, there are. I don't think I can count ten times in the entire time I've been a rep and been part of NPS that somebody hasn't stepped in and picked up the ball. There have been a few times when you know I've been a single man on the page, but very rare. And then all I have to do is PM somebody, and they're right there. Yeah. But the new reps are new reps are picking up the ball. We've got strong, intelligent people that ask sure, questions, yeah. and challenge us. Yeah, it's wonderful and. We're not the pair of bullies. Everybody thinks that we are. Just because we make you oh, we ask questions doesn't make us a bully. I know, right? No. Um, I am so sick of that term. If I come, if I came over and knocked you down, have I taken your ball? <laughs> have I said your ball is ugly? Never. Not one time. Do not correct my diction or my spelling. And don't oh, call me. Don't get me started on the diction and the spelling. You got a lot. I, 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 gotta, I, I just have to say... That uh, I I I hold by my mouth a lot. Of, I am a grammar Nazi, but but I, I refrain. I don't say anything. Yeah, I'm not my talking about your grammar. Is, I mean, we all are. But my God, that doesn't give us the right to correct mm -hmm. somebody. If they can get their thought and their point across, that's really all that matters. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, and two, and two, we have to take into consideration. You know, we have people posting from many other countries now. 
And <clears throat> and when they're posting in China and trying to, they're trying to turn their entire translation over so that it makes sense in English. You know, there, there's got to be some, there's got to be some, you know, ground given and understanding. I am. Um, I think we get so caught up in the details that we, we totally miss the message. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there's no way to be so politically correct that everybody's feelings aren't hurt. And so, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of redneck and I'm kind of point blank. You know, you got to put your big girl panties on and, and understand that nobody's trying to be hateful. If I ask you why you feel the way you do, I'm, I'm asking you to teach me so I can see it from your side. It's not that I'm saying that it's not that way or that your personal experience is invalid. I never say that. Because who am I to tell you that your personal experience is invalid? I, there's right. there's no way for there's no way for me to have that. So, and there's no my job is to keep, it. yeah no, and my job is to make sure the NPS remains a safe and productive environment. And you know I, I still have to tell you today I'm startled that there's almost 600 comments about GH and ghost you know yeah. ghost adventures. <laughs> No, I'm so tired of seeing the TV show talk because it's not educational and it doesn't get us anywhere. I mean, I think with Endeavor coming out, maybe we can start kind of pulling away from the TV show talk and we can start looking at the here and now and what's really happening and what's happening globally, globally, okay? Let's look at what we're going to be actually touching in our community and making work. Who cares about the TV show? Because you know what? They don't get the ratings this year. They're not going to be on next year. We're not going to be talking about it anymore. But we are going to be talking about keying our data into Endeavor and seeing what's going on around South Carolina. What's going on around Florida? What, what what are the patterns being established? What's going on in the UK? What's going on in Africa? We are going to be talking about that. That's going to be ongoing educational information. TV shows, not so much. Not so much at all. We got about except, ten minutes except left. The Shannon Byer show. I will watch that. Yes. <laughs> I will watch Shannon Byer's show. That that will be on PBS. You know. That's, now see now that says something that, about it right there, that it's a public yeah, broadcast. Public television. A public broadcasting because yeah. they're all about truth and honesty and communication and education. Yeah. And it it's will be a different event because it has uh, history involved in it. I think that's fascinating. That's very exciting. Yeah, that's I think, huge. I think it's cool. Yeah, maybe we'll have maybe we'll start seeing smart paranormal TV shows go on there. That would be great. Could it happen? But maybe nobody will watch them. <laughs> there, do you know there's a rumor? Do you know that there's a rumor going around that the Playboy Bunnies are going to have a paranormal show? Really? Did you I know? heard that today. No, no, seriously, and there's, and there's some paranormal, I mean, there's silicone puck, but I, I swear to God, I, I will, I will shoot myself or something. I, I, it's Talk about lack of common sense. Oh my God, did you hear that? I know, right? All I know now is just a shadow from my implant, all right? That was just my implant making a squishy noise Ken, in my Ken, bra. Ken, now, Ken, now, Ken, I have to ask you, Ken, would you watch an investigation from trampolines? Would, would I would uh-huh. watch an investigation from what? I didn't hear you. If the investigators were on trampolines. Investigators on a trampoline. Yeah, if they had their boobs knocking them in the face. If and, Zach took his yeah, shirt off, well, I might have to just watch an episode. It's happened. <laughs> Well, Candy already said know, she was a redneck, and that sounds kind of like a redneck thing, you know? <laughs> I, I'm I'll say it does I, you know, I live in Missouri. You're, you're, you're not a redneck. I, I can tell, you know. But Missouri, I live in the capital of that. So, so. You, oh, you, you know, we guys haven't been to Texas I, much to see the rednecks here. Oh, dude, I lived in Chautauqua, Kansas, which was like 40 miles outside of Joplin, Missouri. Oh, my God. oh, there you go. I had one of the most profound experiences I ever had in my whole life in that town in regards to the paranormal. And <clears throat> not like 30 miles away, Carl Junction was completely wiped out by a tornado. It was like an F4. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and here, in- that's, that's when I started wondering if paranormal phenomenon was tied to severe weather conditions. See, that's these things, she got these three. Huh? It's possible. You never know. 
So, so did you go after the spook light? Did you go looking for the spook light game when you were no, around no. Dalton? No, when um when we were in Chitopa, when, when all that happened, we moved there. We moved there about a week after the tornado. And, uh, oh, so yeah, you weren't worried about the spook light at that point. No, well, I um you know I I I've, I've been raised in Colorado. Um, spent time in Arizona. I finished high school there, and I've lived in Maine and New Hampshire. And when I went to um, Kansas, it was my first experience with tornadoes and that type of stuff, and armadillos. And <laughs> but I was I was just taken back by the devastation and just overwhelmed by the sense of foreboding. It was it, it was something just so intense. I mean, I actually went to a doctor because I thought I was getting the press. <clears throat> it was, I, oh, I just wow. couldn't even, I just couldn't even take the pressure of the, the grief off of me. Um, and I, I hadn't oh, wow. understood it until somebody sat down with me and really talked about it. And like the tree stumps, this, this is something I'd never experienced before. We were driving past this thing and it looked like a, a 60 foot mound of just worms, like, like worm roots or something. It was a tree root ball from a cottonwood. And when we wow. got to the corner of the road and turned, I was just dumbfounded. <laughs> and there, another really interesting part of that was it was part of the um, Underground Railroad. They had a plantation there that was damaged. And I mean, like I said, some of my some of my very profound experiences come from that area. Uh -huh. So, like I said, that's one of the components that's actually come into all of this with the Endeavor Project. Like I said, it's, you know, it's been on my mind for a long time and, you know, because of people like you that it's actually going to get a chance to live and breathe. Sure. Kind of cool how that all comes together. I know, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm eternally grateful and so excited. And I, oh, I, me I too. feel like it's a step closer. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's kind of funny. Since I started doing all this stuff with NDS, I've, I've kind of become the, the para web guy. So a lot of, a lot of my clients are psychics and <laughs> fortune tellers and, and, uh, and para groups. So it's kind well, of honey, kind there's of psychics interesting that how that... just know you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I said if they're psychics, honey, they know you're awesome. There's no question. <laughs> 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 I know you will build me a website. <laughs> I know, right? If and you will do it for free. No, I'm sorry. You answer AD. No. no. <laughs> Let me shake my eight ball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it says. Ask again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> but anyway, I am shooting for uh, the 15th of next month to have everything up and running. Everything's pretty much running. I mean, you can put stuff in there, and it goes to a database, and it's stored. Um, uh, but I want to make everything a little more pretty, make it, make it, make it work a little bit better, um, and uh, then we will start working on how we're going to output that data. Because it's going to take a while to get some data to input. I, I, I need to be able to look at the numbers and what we're getting in to say, how do we want to present this? Do we want to make a graph? You know, obviously with location, we want to, I think it'd be really cool to have a nice geo map to show where all the locations are that, were, that, that have investigations on them. You know, we have that We'll have that work, and but all the other data. How do we want to display that? You know, so. Well, and do we want people to be able to say, "Hey, I'm going to be going to um, Dallas, Texas. Let me go ahead and pull some of the known data for there." You know, we need to really look at how do we want some exactly. of the information used. And we'll gladly give you that for five dollars. No, I'm just joking. I, I don't know how we make a donation that, to NPS. Yeah, make a donation to NPS. So we can there keep feeding Ken to keep them tapping on the keyboard. That that's it. That's right. You can pay me in Twitter. 
<laughs> I got watches. I got fruit snacks. Oh my gosh. She is going what? to be dangerous later. Dangerous, dangerous later. Christmas. I love how your face is frozen on the camera like. <laughs> hey, are they a sponsor? <laughs> I don't like Brand placement. Um, for, as far as what uh, Shannon's saying about she asked, uh, will we be able to put past investigation data in? Yes, we will. Um, it's built. So um, as far as the weather requests, uh, they might only go back to 2008 because I, uh, on that, we, we are we it's we are at the mercy of uh, the Wonderground to have that data on on hand. Um, but you might have to put in some of the weather data manually. But uh, you can definitely put in past uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Trying to go through here to see if there's any other questions. Lots of stuff about that. <laughs> I didn't say anything about that. Hmm. All right, well, we got a few minutes, so we probably need to start wrapping up um, next week on the show. So, you guys, if you've got questions about Endeavor, we can start talking about it on the NPS Facebook page. You guys can ask questions and get a hold of us. Um, try not to bombard Ken because we still need him to finish it. <laughs> so, just kind of post him on the NPS page. But we can start talking a little bit more about it. We can answer more questions about it. You guys know what it is. Um, for people that have missed the show, you can share the link. We'll have the archive link up later. You can share the link and they can find out about it. But we are going to continue NPS Focus in typical NPS fashion with discussion weeks. Next week, the photography team is going to be responsible for information on aliens and UFOs. So next week we will have, I guess, I'll have to see why I can pull out of the photo team to be on with us. Um, and we'll talk about some of the more interesting um, historical and famous pictures that we come up with. So we'll talk about that next week. And we'll also be posting them on the NPS page throughout the week. So again, bringing you some education. And I have a feeling we'll be talking a lot about Endeavor for the next week too. So you guys keep the questions coming. As soon as Ken's ready for it to launch, it sounds like around July 15th. We are going to start pushing it too, so you'll see a lot of that. So, Candy, do you want to take care of saying thank you to the sponsors? I don't know who the sponsors are. <laughs> oh my gosh, one of them is your baby. Oh, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we would like for you to visit Blessed Be, www.blessedbe.cc. -E it's your one stop occult shop, all things related. You can have you can find sage there, runes, um, crystals, pendulums, yeah, pendulums, anything you can imagine. If you can't find it there, just email us and we'll look for it for you. Please visit us. All right. See, I, I gotta, I gotta train her better. I'm working with her. I'm working with her. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> yes, you are. It takes a special person to put up with all of us at NPS. <laughs> uh, I love you guys. All right, you want to sign off the show since I opened it? Well, I would like to thank you all for coming out tonight and for your timing. Thank you very much. Is that you? And thank you very much, Ken, um, for coming on as the NPS web god and the diva, Sherry Collins. And we'll talk to you guys next week, same time, same place. See ya. All right. Sounds good.